Okay, so for the test that we have, uh, the problem will be, uh, the first problem will be how to manage a state uh, in the form of an array. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have some slides here that are at the end of the chapter called forms, uh, that actually deal with this topic. Where, you know, we know React uh, uh, requires that, uh, okay, we cannot mutate a state. So whenever we need to change something into an array, we must create a new array. So we should always be careful to use methods that return new arrays instead of modifying the current one. Um, always in the set, uh, set exams, uh, we should always uh, create a new array with the modified properties. And see, for example, uh, how to do that. Huh? Uh, for example, uh, these are typical pattern when we have a, a, um, a state of type array and we want, to, we want to add a new element. So we can call the set uh, list, set the new list, the new value of the list, by building a new array, see the square brackets, uh, where we use the, the, the easy syntax using the destructuring of the old value and adding a new item at the beginning or at the end uh, as you prefer. So what we are doing is to create a new array where we copy all the elements from before, three dots, name of the array, will expand all the old elements inside the square brackets, ideally, and then we add the, the element that we want to add, the beginning or, or the end, before or after. And so this will be the new value of the state. Since the new value of the state depends on the current state, we must uh, put it into a callback. So we should not set a list immediately of this new array, but set a list of a function that will compute the new array. So in this way, when we call the set uh, state uh, or the array, when it will be executed, it will, be com it will compute a new array, and the new array will be applied in place of the old one. It may look like uh, an extra effort of copying elements. Uh, so we are you know, slowing down the program in a way because we are just adding one item at the end or at the beginning. But actually, it's the price to pay for uh, for handling the asynchronous behavior in a clean way, okay? Old value, new value, they are two separate objects. There are no, there are no operation that will change the value of an existing object in React. Hmm? Uh, by the way, in, uh, in the standard JavaScript library, there's also a concat uh, method that does exactly the same thing, uh, that creates a new array with a new element added at the end. We don't use push. Push is adding an element uh, at the end of the current array. So it's going to modify the current array. If, if you want, you, use, you may use concat that creates a new array, concat and the element, and returns the new array. But personally, I think it's easier to write in this way uh, because I don't need to remember the concat method, basically, or I never remember it. And I always, uh, I'm, I'm unsure whether the method modifies the array or not. But anyway. And the same goes uh, if you are need to, uh, okay, let's say, for example, delete uh, some items. Deleting some items basically is just uh, filtering them. So we have the list, the current state, and we want to filter all the elements uh, that are not in position three or that are not a given value or that don't have a given property. So filter, like all the, all the functional methods work well here. Because all the functional methods are already returning new arrays. So we always put that, we need to put that into a callback, since the new array that we are computing depends on the current array. And using a filter to create a new array containing a subset of the current elements. Or maybe we just want to delete the first one or the last one, so it can also, in some cases, do with the structuring for separating the first and last item, but uh, 
it's a more corner case. Normally, for removing something, we tend to use filter. And for modifying something, so you, you need to change an element inside the array, uh, we could use a, a map to reconstruct an array that is identical to the previous one in all the elements and modified in some specific location. So we are creating a new array, uh, and we we'll map uh, in, at every location. We ask, uh, uh, do you need to modify it or not? If not, we just copy the old value. If we need to modify it, we create, we compute a new value to put there. Or of course, we can you just uh, maybe it's easier to create a new copy of the list, uh, new list equal to three dots old list, uh, and then modify the new list. Just don't modify the old one. Okay. So instead of a map, uh, you could just uh, create a co an identical copy and then modify the copy. It's always it's also possible. Um, be careful when the list that you want to modify contains objects, and you only want to modify some property of this object. Uh, for example, yeah, we had an example where uh, we have an object item with two fields, uh, ID and value, and we only want to modify the ID, for example, or for the, for only modify the value, not the ID. So we could be tempted to say, okay, if the ID is the index of the element that we want to modify, then we already have the item object, we modify the value to the new value. And so we return the new item with the value modified. Uh, this is dangerous, or basically, this is wrong, because we are creating, of course, a new list. But the new list will contain the same object as before with some field modified. So we actually modified one object inside the, 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 the array. What we should do is to recreate a new object. So if the object has seven properties and we only change one, nevertheless, we recreate another object with, all, with six properties copied from the old one and another, uh, the new one and the changed one uh, computed from scratch. Really, we should always try to... The equal sign is dangerous, I would say. Huh? Every time we are trying to modify something existing, we should, we should ring a, a bell saying, okay, so we are not dealing with the immutable values here. So these operations are to be done, say, carefully, but we can create our own callbacks that do it uh, cleanly so that all the bottom components don't need to care about all these details. Uh, the responsibility of managing the state is, of course, in the component that owns the state. And we, we should we will do all these uh, you know, uh, careful uh, operations. So the easier way, the easiest uh, operation that we can do here in our uh, exercise is uh, uh, implementing where is the browser here? Implementing the delete functionality. It's easy. A bit more complex will be add, not for the adding, but for managing of the forms. And editing will be the more complete, the more the most complex one. Okay, so we are starting today. We will finish in not next weeks because it's uh, it's holiday, but the week after that. Hmm? But for the delete, uh, we should be able to do it today. Um, basically. We 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 already have the state uh, in the apt.js component, and uh, we want to add uh, a method for being able to delete one exam given its code. For example, it's a unique identifier. Uh, as a detail, from compared to uh, last week, I added the code column here so that it's more explicit. We can see it because. It will be the key no? for us. So we can just define a function for removing exam. Const remove exam. 
uh, exam, which will be a function that takes a code and then does some ugly stuff to remove the exam. Uh, removing the exam just means uh, uh, rebuilding a new array of exams uh, where the current one has been filtered out. And this will be scheduled in the future when the set state uh, call will happen. So we will call set exams. Uh, schedule the change uh, in the future where uh, when the call will happen we i will get the old exams the current future value and we should return an expression with the new value of the array and this new value could be just the old exams filter where we remove those elements uh, that match the code all the exams whose code is equal okay so filter we read sorry filter um, ask for a condition to, to retain the elements so we retain all the elements whose code is different from the one that we want to delete so filter an exam where uh, this exam code is different from code So there's a bit of nesting here. Set exam sets a callback to be executed. The callback will get the old copy of the state and should return the new value of the state. This new value of the state is computed starting from the old value by applying a filter method. And then we have the callback of the filter that will just take one exam at a time and will tell me whether to retain this exam or not. And the exam should be retained, so not deleted, if the code of this exam is different from the code they wish to delete. Okay? Does anybody see that? So at this point, the, this expression will consist of a new array. This array will be uh, will replace the current value of exams, and everything that depends on exams will be re-rendered down the road. Now, who is going to call this remove method? Or this, uh, remove exam uh, method? Well. Uh, it needs to be called uh, down by 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 inside the, the exam row, inside the exam actions. Here, this guy here should be able to call this function, and it should know the reference to the function and the code of the exam that we wish to delete. Because here we should add something like uh, on click execute a callback function. I don't make the same mistake twice. A callback function that will call some props uh, dot uh, remove exam with uh, the code props uh, exam code. I'm assuming that these props are there. So let, 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 now let's make it happen. What I need to do here is, OK, when I click on this button, I call in the callback. And what is the callback doing? It's calling the remove exam method that we defined in app. And we need to drill down to the props until we reach this component. And the parameter of this remove exam should be the code of the exam. So this button. 
at least this exam action component uh, should know about uh, the exam that corresponds to the row in which the button is located. At least the code, but it's better to give the, the full object uh, so that <laughs> instead of just uh, you know, unpacking the code. So now what, what we're missing is just drilling down all the information. So uh, exam action already received, uh, yeah, already received the, the exam property. So this part uh, is OK. Now we need also to pass remove exam. So the color of exam actions is uh, exam row. And we need to pass the remove exam property from up above. We don't have it. So let's assume our father is going to, our parent is going, father or mother, sorry, I don't want to be. Our parent is going to provide us with remove exams. Some. And who's my parent or exam row is exam table. So exam table will call exam row, exam, editable and remove exam equal to is this one function of mine no it's from up so i should receive it from up props dot remove exam okay so we don't need any callback here any square narrow function because we are just passing down the reference to the function up there. Okay, We are not calling the function. We are not creating new functions. We are just uh, percolating a, 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 um, a reference. Hmm? Letting it flow through the different nested components. And now in app, finally, we should Take this remove exam, which is really a, a new variable here, and pass it down to the exam table. A remove exam equal to remove exam. You see, there's no props here. I'm not getting it from my father. It's mine. So we define a method that should if there's no bugs, uh, should remove an element from, a, from an array, or still better, should create a new array with one element removed. And should replace the state. This function is passed down to the component uh, that has the information to call it. When it's rendered. You know, because this component is only rendered sometimes depending on the editable property. So it's all, you know, the, the view of, of React is very easy because every, we, 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 sorry, we may think that everything is static. Depending on the current value of the state, we are doing something. That's it. And if the component that we are rendering has some actions or some event render, they will be registered on that component. We, should need, we don't need to care when this component disappears or goes away because there will be a different state and so the interface will have a different set of behaviors, of allowed behaviors. So if I save all the files here, I should be able to go into change mode and delete the second one. Gone. And delete also the first one. Of course, I could also delete the last one, and uh, now I'm stuck, of course, because there's only we have no add functionality yet. Of course, we are, I delete it just from the memory in the browser because if I reload the application, everything is is constant. So mm -hmm. there's no backend where we are actually deleting things. And here we see also the the importance of the key attributes that we needed to use when creating the table rows. Because when I deleted the middle row, okay, uh, React saw a change in the rendering of the component, a change in the DOM. 
We had first three TR, 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 and then we only have two. But how can React know which one was deleted? Okay, it knows because we have this key that is still valid, this key that disappeared, and this key that is still valid. So the, the matching algorithm in React deducted that the second row was deleted. And so we just remove from the DOM the second row without changing the first and last. If we didn't have the keys, React will not be able to do this optimization. And so we see, okay, I have a table with three rows. I replace it with a table with two rows. So what I can do, I don't know, let's delete the last one. And then let's, let's check the contents. So the first row is identical. I don't need to change it, but the second row is different. Because previously it had the value for this, these values, and now the, sec the new second row has these contents. And so we'll change the content to every cell in the table. So providing the keys, which is mandatory whenever we have a list, uh, gives React the possibility of knowing or understanding what changed in a list of, of elements. Especially, and this is a mandatory for lists because they may have be large or long lists. Okay, with a lot of elements, so it's very it's important to, that React is, is able to rebuild only uh, uh, the part of the of the table that really contains the elements. So uh, we have a parallel here because the let's go to exam table. We are using key to help uh, React, but also the key is a code. And we are also using this code for deciding which element to, de to delete. Because inside uh, you know, the, the exam, we have the code again. And code is a parameter that we need to, uh, to know for calling or remove exams. Okay, So basically, the code is the, the, the key of the element. The unique value of the element is used both by React for optimizing the rendering and both by us for managing the data structure. Uh, the detail is that the key attribute is used by React, but is not passed down as a property. So it's an, it's an exception. Key is not a visible property inside the exam row. I cannot use a, uh, props dot key. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. It's being eaten up uh, by React. So if we need, uh, and usually we need uh, also the value, we should pass it uh, alongside. So it's not uncommon to see key equal exam dot code, code equal exam dot code. Because one is used by React and the other will be needed by our code. Now we are passing the object, which is better because we also need other information. And uh, uh, usually it's the other way around. We know which is the identifying information for an object, uh, and we use that as a key. Hmm? Okay, so that was easy, wasn't it? Of course, uh, uh, right now it's very, we, we're just one line. What we are missing here, just to focus on, on the state management, we are missing all the validations, all the controls, all the checks. Uh, okay, because uh, there's something also missing here on the, the average. I don't know what it, why it's empty. In app, length, the G. Hmm? Yeah, now it's two. And so we see that. When I delete some exam, the average, of course, decreases. Of course. I was never sure until I tried. And immediately, you know, I, I don't need to do anything special because just remember the rendering rules. Somebody called uh, remove exam. Remove exam called set exams. I don't care what having size there. The state change. React schedules a state change. And so the, the current value of exams is no longer the same. And this app is re-rendered. We render with a new current value, constant value, immutable value of exams. So it's it's a new value, still immutable. It, it has been muted behind the scenes. I don't know that, but I'm being called with a new a new value here. And of course, uh, this new value is being used throughout all the computation. So we don't need to remember to update that element. 
we are just recreating it. And this makes it very easy because we don't have, you know, in, like in the normal DOM manipulation, when something happens, you must remember where are all the effects of this element throughout all the elements of the page. I need to update this, I need to hide that block, I need to change the style, and so on. Here we're just, okay, we have the new version of the state, let's rec recreate everything with this new version. Thinking as it were a constant. Of course, we need to put a real average here, not to cheat to ourselves. It's a bit of an expression, so maybe let's define a function. Uh, XM average. Which is just takes uh, oh, the state is already known, so we may just compute uh, um, the sum. It can compute the sum with the reduce operation. So it would be X sums. But reduce. So this is a callback uh, with the, the current uh, sum and the new element, and the return s plus e, starting with zero. And this, this is the sum of the scores divided by the example of length. And so here I can call the exam average function. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> not a number is not a good average. So let me see. Object, object, zero. This is the result of the reduce. Ah, stupid. Because S uh, is, a, is an exam object. So I'm doing some concatenation of exam objects. I should sum the exam uh, score. Let's see. Even better. Uh, S dot E S plus E dot score. Okay. Probably if I if I wrote a four <laughs> a four cycle, I, it would make less mistakes. I don't I don't care. But just to show that it's a, just a helper function here that works uh, with a constant value x times. It doesn't, it, I'm not modifying the exams. I can use it as a, any other variable, as, a, as any other value, constant value. I can do any sort of computation, I don't care. And every time exams changes, of course, this computation is redone from scratch with the, with the current value, with a new current value. So if I delete in the first one, the average is recomputed. Okay, so. This is a, a real, uh, say, callback that is will be needed for managing the state by lower level component. This is just an internal private helper function that we write for making our life easier. We don't need to pass it around, okay? Um, we might also, if we want, just don't be scared of local variables. We could just compute uh, uh, the exam sum no, if, 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 if I wanted to debug it uh, maybe uh, like uh, take this sum and then we compute uh, an exam average by taking the exam sum divided by the length, like this. Let's 
and this and uh, use this value here inside so we are computing these are just normal function executor execution so i'm defining some values computing some extra vari variables uh, according to the input values which are props uh, and state and then i'm reusing the value of this variable there's nothing strange uh, and it still works okay these variables are not state are not state variable need, don't need to be state variable they are just intermediate values in a computation that will be recomputed every time every time i call this function every time the component is rendered these values will be created from scratch Okay, I, it's not for not, not everything needs to be managed as a state. Basically, very few things need to be considered a state, but you can use variables, you can use functions that will help you uh, to simplify your return statement, which is the real goal of the function. You know that at the return, everything disappears. All variables are, been, are deleted, except everything disappears when we do return except uh, state variables that are stored outside the function by the hooks mechanism the special private cache where the state goes and uh, closures so this function will be remembered even when this function is over because uh, we are passed it around to another component so it's stored as a closure in the lower level function so it can be called uh, by other components even when this component is done okay so we we, we may have all the complexity we want uh, this function i define this function inside app uh, but if the function becomes complex i can define it in another file or outside the function it's, it's normal javascript okay we can manage our code as long as we follow the rules the function components must be pure functions. State should be ne never be modified. And information can only flow from um, parents to children. That's it. And state is immutable. Everything else, uh, which is just uh, rendering an interface that may be even very complex, with a lot of helper functions, computation, and stuff like that, it's totally free. Yeah? It's just JavaScript functions. OK, that was the easy part, as I mentioned, deleting. Because deleting doesn't have any extra information. Just give me the code uh, of the item to delete. A bit more complex, and we are starting to see it uh, right now, is, uh, for example, insertion. Hmm. So these are just uh, input elements in HTML. I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't even, even use the booster classes to, to, to we, we could do we, we could use the booster classes to make it nicer, look nicer. But I don't want to make it more complex. Um, what did I do here? Is to add one row with some input elements. Very next, very empty. So how do forms, input elements, behave in React? So in a plain JavaScript, is easy. Because an input element is a DOM node. This DOM node has a property value. So the value property of the DOM node of an input element always contains the current content of the form of the input so when i'm typing something here this is just it's not a react it's just an input element a plain old html input i'm actually changing the browser is actually changing the value property of the element itself i may want to read this value from javascript i can do that i can have some uh, even tender 
that uh, links to the key press or to the change event. So this input element generates events. Typically, will generate a key press event every time it press a new key, or a change event every time it move outside the element to another one, and of course the value has been changed. So the change event fires when they finish editing a field, they move to the next one. The key press event fires uh, at every small edit. What, but what does it mean? It means that the input element in HTML manages its own state. Value is the current state of an input element, which is against uh, the rules of React. We have a component that manages an internal state with its own rules that are not the React rules. We don't want that. Okay? We can't have that in React. And so there are some rules for managing forms in React. Uh, in JaxX, but in generally in React. And that the designers of React tries to rethink the behavior of the forms in order to make them more consistent with the rest of React. And by the way, since they were there, they try to sim simplify a lot of strange behaviors or uh, different behaviors that form elements have. Uh, um, for example, if you have a text area, you don't use, text area doesn't have a value attribute. A checkbox doesn't have a value attribute. Checkbox has a checked attribute. A text area is a child content that contains the text. So extracting the text from a text area is different from extracting the text from an input element, which is a pain. Okay, and radio button behave in a different way from uh, uh, select uh, drop down menus that behave in a different way from checkboxes because because HTML hmm? historical reason the DOM. In React, they rebuilt the basic form components, which is basically the input checkbox and text area and select, <laughs> then not, not many more, um, by generating simpler events. They call them synthetic events. So they are not uh, real DOM events. So it's something that manages the real DOM events and generates something which is more regular, basically, and so easier to handle. Hmm? So. In general, in JSX or in React, for every form element, be it an input, a select, a uh, set of ready buttons, or whatever, we have a value attribute that always represents the current value. This value ad um, attribute is uh, read write. So we can modify the value attribute, or we can, and so it will be updated on the page, or we can read the value attribute and we can get the current value. Uh, with, there's also a default value that can be used to create uh, you know, the, the empty value, the, what, what the, 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 the field will display uh, when the form is first reloaded. Mm -hmm. And it also applies to text areas and selects that in normal HTML needs a totally different uh, treatment. So we always focus on the value attribute. And on change, it's an event that uh, is Called is fired every time something changes. So even on a single key press, somebody changes something with a key or with the mouse or by clicking or by so every time a, even a single character changes in a field, the change event is generated. So these are very different events from the change in HTML. HTML change is only fired when you move out when when the a text input loses the focus of, the, of your cursor. In React, every time you type a key, on change is called. And so you can set your own event handler for on change attributes, for inputs, or for all the other elements. So basically, the, the golden rule is that every form element consistently uses uh, value and on change attributes uh, to manage its own state. So this is a big simplification of uh, the normal um, HTML behavior. And all event handlers, of course, generate event objects. 
and like in normal HTML. These relevant objects are a bit different in React, but they contain the same information. In particular, they have the event target uh, attribute. We already saw that in the basic DOM. Okay. Even dot target is a pointer to the node that was the source of the event. Okay. We, remember we. It was a bit strange that the source was called target, but then uh, we we got uh, you know, used to that. So that's so from the even dot target, we may know we may extract the value if you want. Uh, okay, so but this is just a list of the events, uh, but we don't need uh, right now today to understand all of that. So we just the list of the, all the synthetic events. Uh, I I put in bold face those that we are more or less likely uh, to manage, uh, and these are the the methods and the properties of, of this these synthetic events. But we need later. Uh, okay, event tender. So we already did that before when we defined the on click event tender. That it was just a button. It could it could have been a link. It could have been any element in the page. The on click received a handler. I can define the handler as an error expression, as a function expression, as you want. I just need to remember not to call the function itself. Like my first mistake this morning. Okay, it was still early, so I partially partially justified. Uh, not never call a handler inside the, its definition. Okay, always have a function. They may be a reference to a function, or a callback uh, uh, that will create a, a new uh, anonymous function and store its reference. And also, in um, in HTML, you would write uh, a function name like this, because in HTML the attributes are always strings. In JSX, this is a reference to a JavaScript variable, and so you must put it as a JavaScript expression in braces. Okay, this is not going to work uh, in, in JSX, even if it's a normal HTML uh, model. Always pass a function, pass a JavaScript object, uh, and this obviously should be a function. So either a reference to a function or an inline callback, uh, like uh, uh, we have here, for example. So here we have the examples. Uh, of course, the inline version is uh, always needed when we have some parameters. Otherwise, we can define just uh, pass the reference to the function itself. Hmm? Don't call the function here, because otherwise it will be called when we create a component and not when the user clicks on the button. Hmm? OK. Um, About the state, no. so the discussion was that input elements, form elements in general, own an internal state. And this state, in, in a way, fights uh, with the state uh, managed by the React. Uh, we have do two different ways of managing the state which are incompatible. Uh, React wants to be in control of everything that is shown in the page. The content of a form cannot depend on something that the user did without the full control of React. The con in, in the React philosophy, the content of a, an input element should only depend on the props and the state managed by, the ref the, by React itself, not by something external. So the philosophy of React is to control also the content of this state. So the input element owns the state. This can, we cannot do anything against it because it's part of the DOM. But this state value will be strictly controlled by React by copying inside, making, uh, updating the DOM state every time a, a real React state changes. Uh, this, as a name, is called uh, creating controlled components. A control component, in particular for forms, is a component where the value shown in the form element, so an input text, 
the radio button, select the selected radio button, the menu, dro the drop down list selected, and so on, is controlled by React. So the user doesn't really control what's going what's going into the input element. The user types something and asks React to update the input box for him or for her. So what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, the state, the value of an input, let's take the input as an example, this is the easiest one, is uh, the value is always uh, set uh, on a React state, starting from a React state. And this makes the component, uh, let's say, impossible to edit, unless we also manage the on-change event that allows the user to, to change it. Hmm? Uh, it's better done than explained. OK, <laughs> so wait for one minute, a minute, please, because this sentence was not so easy to, uh, to understand in practice. Uh, and the alternative would be to use uncontrolled components uh, where the component has its own state and the React tries to uh, read its state later when it's uh, completed by, hmm? we should avoid it as, as much as possible. So how does it work? We have a form element, an input. And we generate this input by creating one state variable, let's call it x, in our component, and enforcing value equal to x. So in this way, the actual value of the input element will always be forced to x in the rendering. Whatever the value of x will always be in the input element. And how can the user type something? Okay, because we also register a non-change event. Whenever the user types something, we this is the, the event lender for the change on change event handler, change x, takes the event where the user types something or changed something extract the values changed by the user and if we want we can set the new value of x to the modified value and of course changing x will re-render the component with a new value of the x and so we re-render the input element with a new value so in this way react will as soon as i take something it will stop me an analyze what I typed, the, val the current value of the element, and if it likes it, if I like it, I write it this callback. If I like it, I can update x. x will regenerate the component with a new value. So everything, every keystroke I press is filtered by the unchanged event handler. In this way, I can have full control. I can prevent some characters to be inserted or some type of edit to happen. And so I, don't, I never need in my code to read the, the value of the input element because I, already, I always know what is in there, x. OK, so we are shifting the state up from the input element to the component that instantiate the, the input element itself. Of course, we must set value and unchange together in a consistent way. If we only set value and forget the unchange, the uh, input element would be impossible to edit. Mm -hmm. Because the value will be forced to the initial value of the state x. So, um, let, let's try to To do that in our code, no? for example, this was a normal input element. We want to manage it in, in React. It means that we have one, two, three, four inputs. They will require four different uh, state variables in the component where these are instantiated. Okay, right now, they are all in, in exam table. Maybe I want to 
move them down into a component. Okay, not to make it more complex. So maybe all this this part uh, we should create uh, a component. Uh, I call it add exam form, for example, not to add any complexity to this uh, component, just just to to work in a separate file. Okay, so add exam form. I already took a note or the name, and I define add exam form props. default add exam form and finally let just me copy these lines here into the component and call the component instead of the the table data. We're just just a simple refactoring for working on a clean file. Hmm? Slash tr. Uh, okay. And then, of course, I need to import this from Addison form. Okay. So let me check if nothing changed. Uh, error element type. Sorry, I need to save it. Okay. okay. So I just moved this last row to another component. I did nothing intelligent. Hmm? Okay. So let's imagine the first uh, uh, field is the code of the exam. Right now, it's a so called uncontrolled input element because the, the, the input is free to do whatever it wants. I want to take control of that. It means that in my component, I should create a state that will correspond to force the value of that component. So, const is the code. So, the code, set code, equal to your state. The initial value could be, okay, empty. Your state, I should import it from React. And I may now force the value to code. In the input element. So I created one state, and I'm using the state to control the value of the element making it a controlled component. Right now, if I save this and I go there, this component is controlled in the sense that I cannot type anything. I try to type, but nothing happens. Because code is still the empty string, nothing called set, set code for changing it. And so the value is stuck to be the empty string. Or whatever initial value I put there. And I have a warning that's saying, okay, you provided a value prop without a non-change handler. This will render a read-only field. Not a good idea. It's telling me, me you should uh, implement on change or set the value of read-only to be explicit. Of course, we want it to be able to change. So we have a big warning also when we forget. Uh, no, these two methods, these two attributes, value and unchange, should always go together. And so we should implement an unchange, oops, an unchange handler here. And what should unchange do? Well, it should just, if we don't want to do any special validation or anything, we should just take the current uh, value from the DOM node corresponding to the keystroke and update the state. Well, schedule the state update. So, callback that will call a set code. Sorry, the callback takes the event, the change event, and we set the code to event.target.target. 
Lo sveglio. The value attribute from, coming from the DOM of the source of the change event. And uh, if I try to reload this page, that ugly warning disappears. And now I can edit this field again. But the difference is that this value is now inside a React state. If I go to the components and I check the form component, you see that I have one state variable with this value. And every time I type something, deleting, modifying, whatever, this state is immediately updated. Well, basically, the state is, is updated before the letter appears down there. Because the real sequence is I click a letter, I type a key, it will fire the on-change event. The on-change event will schedule a, a state change. The state change will later on change the state variable. And the new state variable will uh, trigger a re-render of this component that will recreate the input and do with my new letter in there. Crazy stuff. Every keystroke, we go all this way with two asynchronous events, on change and then set code. But that's the way to keep all the control on that. And so uh, we can replicate this game Many times uh, we have also the name of the course, so it will be a separate variable. As I, I mentioned before, it's better to have separate states instead of one object state because we see that every time we touch one of them, we render everything, so we need to uh, make the modification as local as possible. Use state uh, again, an empty value. Uh, and I can control the second element, uh, value equal to name and on change equal to callback that takes an event and uh, calls set name this time with the value event dot target dot value. So the only thing that changes here is the name of the variable and the name of the setter function. And we have a score, score, set score, which is uh, again, this time is, it's a number, so maybe we initialize it uh, with zero. And the value is uh, value is score on change. Uh, hmm. Let's do it like this, and we have to work on this next time because uh, values um, set score. Value. This will be a problem because target.value is a string. And we want score to be an integer. So we need to be a, a bit of check and not just blindly update the, this field. Yes? Can we still use the HTML attributes for validation like the name and mark to match the end? Yes, yes. The attributes, the uh, you, yes, the HTML attributes can, can be applied. The, the only so min, max uh, um, required, and so on. The only problem is that uh, every time uh, they they might fire uh, too soon, so they might prevent you from changing something. Mm -hmm. So we'll be uh, we'll uh, we'll spend some time next time on the validation. Okay, uh, uh, when is better to do the validation, and whether it's better to do it on the React side or on the HTML side? Again, there are two. The, these are two separate mechanisms. One on the HTML side, and the other on React. Uh, and we may we should choose uh, which way because they, they their interaction is not so clean. Hmm? So, uh, 
as it's something that, of course, we need to look into. Hmm? The date is easier. E equal to date. That's, oh, yes. No, oh, sorry. We, I need to create the state. Const date set date. Use state. Well, let's start it empty and see what happens. On change is event set date event dot target. So right now we have a very stupid form which that only replicate that allows every editing function for the user. It just replicates the action doesn't do any filtering, any validation yet. Okay. But it allows the user to use the form. You see, I can also insert letters here, change the date. And all this information will be available in the state of this component. So the code is 0, 1, A, B, C. Let's put something meaningful. My exam. 37 and a date and you see that we have all this information here the date is already it's automatically in the ISO format so year a month day so it's already in the right format for creating a DJS object or whatever so the, the input does the right thing uh, the uh, score is a string so we need to be aware of that um, when we decide to create the exam object, for example. Hmm? So this means uh, that we are ready for managing the action of the Add button. Because when we click on Add, uh, of course, we should call a callback function that comes from, from above to uh, uh, modify the exams list state and uh, what are the values of the exam that we want to add they are just here i don't need to do any work at this point uh, for picking the value from the html elements because i already have them in my react state so the low level will be managing the, the input component but then all the high level information or level operations are done directly with these values okay so uh, today the time is over, so we cannot see the the, no, the, the fireworks of adding new uh, a new exam. We should wait until a couple of weeks because uh, next uh, Tuesday we are still on vacation. But uh, the, at least it would be useful for for being familiar also on Thursday with the with the simple uh, operation like filtering and deleting and uh, managing the forms and doing insertion. It's more complex because we have also to do all the validation. Okay, and that will be the topic on next class. Thank you, and see you in a couple of weeks.